G'day lads, Sean here, Hammerhead Garage. Got another little video here for you today. Made some progress on the Ford overnight. We're gonna do some math today, boys. Stick around. I don't know nothing about poly locks because I've never used them, so I spent last night doing some research and I come up with a whole bunch of stuff to show you. And some of it's pretty cool, I gotta admit. Anyway, there's the mocked up head. The monster. And what I'm trying to figure out is these are the poly locks and you have, there's a minimum thread engagement that you have to figure out. So basically what it is is poly locks rule of thumb for thread engagement is on a 3 8 stud 1.5 times the diameter. So the diameter of these is, point, is 0 0.370 times 1.5. There's the number I'm shooting for, 0.555. That'll give me the 1.5 times diameter. And what I mean by that is the diameter of the stud versus the length of this, overall length of this, and how much it's engaging in till I hit the stud. So I'll show you basically what I'm talking about here. So how I came up with the number was the dial caliper here. Put it on, zero it of course. Zero. Come on. Zero, zero. All right, so basically you measure there. Okay, that gives you your diameter. So you write that number down. Then you take your poly lock here and you take another measurement. There's like a depth measurement on these things, as you guys know. Just stick it in there and push down on it until it bottoms out, like so. You take that measurement and you come up with that. A measure, B measure. And what that is, the B measure would be the total height of the poly lock, and the A measure would be the total height of the poly lock minus the distance, okay, minus the distance, it goes inside the poly lock until it bottoms out on the rocker stud. That measurement so I've come up with I've got 0.526 it's not quite 0 0.055 but the thing you got to keep in mind boys is the fact that I've only got a quarter inch of free of um, I've only got a quarter turn on this poly lock okay just a quarter turn when I said hydraulic valve lash on small block forwards I usually go between a half and three quarters so just me cranking it down another quarter is going to get me awfully close, if not on that number. So I'm good. I'm good on these. So from what I understand, the way to properly adjust these poly locks, and if you guys know this stuff, please tell me if I'm doing this wrong. Um, you basically, you put about a half of your total preload into the lifter. So let's say I'm shooting for three quarters of a turn. Well, I put, I put about you know like a little over a quarter of a turn into it then what I would do is I take my little um, set key or whatever you call those this is the ones I'm using boys it's the manly ones they're hardened and they're supposed to be really good from what I've read and they also fit under the stock valve cover so that's another bonus they're only an inch long anyway there's a set screw that goes in on top of the poly to lock it in place once you get the measurement in there so what I'm planning on doing is I'll put a quarter of the lash into the into the rocker arm. Then I'll put the set screw in, tighten it down while holding the wrench, and then I'll take the whole unit, both of them, and turn it the rest of my preload. So another quarter. The guys have been saying they've been doing that and have had zero problems with them coming loose. But I'll let you know. Um, I don't know for sure if these are going to be too long these push rods or too short and I won't know until I actually clay up the piston and run it through that would be the next step is I'll that head is just held down with one bolt but anyway I put the I put the uh, header back on because I wanted to make sure that it was going to line up and it does not only does it line up but it's got angled spark plugs so it's a lot easier to get the damn boots on I won't be burning them up so that's a bonus but um, Anyway, stay tuned, fellas. I'm going to uh, put some modeling clay on the piston, and I'll show you guys how to do the proper piston-to-valve clearance so you can measure the clay, 
the valves are going to come down and they're going to make an indent in that clay and you're going to want to cut that clay on the, while it's still on the piston and measure it with this depth gauge right here. Measure it with that to see how much clearance you got. And like I said before, you're roughly shooting for 80 thou on the intake and about 100 thou on the exhaust. Then you, got, you know you got lots of room then. Even for RPM stretch, like the, ha the higher you wind the motor, the more clearance you're going to need. So if I had a race engine here, which I don't, and I was going to wind this thing to 7500, I'd want to make sure I got a lot of clearance on them valves for, because they, things stretch at RPM, right? But anyway, stay tuned. It's a learning process for me too. Like I said, I've never dealt with polylocks before. So let's see if we can get this valve train all set up properly and um, get, her, get her done. I got a lot of cleaning to do. I got my ARP head bolts here. I got to clean them all up. They're quite dirty and they got old thread sealant and stuff on them. Plus I got a new, um, a new bottle of that ARP um, grease, assembly grease that you put under the flat washer and on the head of the bolt so you get a true torque. So uh, anyway, thumbs up for War Amp. Stay classy boys, more coming.